uh, Bud Light. Now, you may remember Bud Light, the America's favourite beer, it's made by a big company called Anheuser-Busch. A couple of months ago, in their wisdom, they decided to go woke, and it looks like they're going broke. Uh, they hired a trans woman called D Dylan Mulvaney to become the face of America's favourite beer, and frankly, uh, Middle America didn't like it. They boycotted that beer. We're now hearing uh, that the company is in free fall. Uh, they are desperately trying to regain their traditional customers uh, but uh, that with very little success to the extent that the salesmen who sell the beer to the various outlets uh, many of them are losing thousands and thousands of pounds uh, dollars I should say in commission every month so there's this sense that this disastrous decision uh, to hire Dylan Mulvaney as the face of Bud Light might have ruined the entire brand. Have we got uh, Dylan Mulvaney in all her glory there? Can we watch? No sound on this, but there's Dylan Mulvaney uh, p pushing the beer. Uh, Bud Light. Now, uh, that didn't go down well. Kid Rock, among other people, he got a, a huge stack of Bud Lights and machine gunned them to bits. <laughs> and that sort of was reflective of Americans' attitude. There's old Kid there, not happy with this decision. Uh, various other luminaries, celebrities, there it goes. That's what, that's what Kid Rock thought of it. Um, but, I mean, it's an extraordinary decision uh, that... Uh, Beggar's belief, really. Why on earth did they ever think that this new direction, that going woke, that having a trans woman as the face of America's favourite beer, it's middle America's beer. You know, why did they think that in the Midwest they go, oh, great, we've got a trans woman? Uh, let's talk to the senior fellow at the New Culture Forum, social commentator as well, Ra Rafe Heidel Manku. Hi, Rafe. Uh, this Hi. was what, what, what a decision. I think it was towards the end of April that uh, uh, Bud Light decided uh, to go woke. And it looks like it's going broke. What possesses companies like this to go down this mad alley? I mean, I don't know much about business or beer for that matter. I used to live in America and I could tell you uh, that the idea of trying to sell Bud Light to middle America through the prism of a trans woman was not a great idea. Uh, what, what possessed them to go down this route, do you think, Rafe? Yeah, uh, actually it launched on April the 1st, April 1st. <laughs> That's it, right, it, I it, forgot it, that, yes. Some, in, some <laughs> inclination. And you're right, you know, I mean, the damage has been done through that ad. And, it, you know, it's difficult to see where the light is at the end of that tunnel. To be, you know, to be seen holding a, a can of Bud Light now is as embarrassing as having your flies undone when you uh, <laughs> ran out of underwear. Uh, uh, and, you know, the logic here is the same that we're seeing in government, in our institutions, our museums and galleries, in our education system. It's the disconnect between those in power and the rest of us, you know, whether it be the electorate who are being taken for fools by government, mm. whether it be uh, museums telling us that they're going to decolonize their collections, even though we want to see our great past heritage being displayed, or whether it be here where you have woke executives, increasingly women, where women are now forming a, a larger part of these marketing brands, uh, determining what they think is appropriate rather than what the audience want to know. You know, I lived in North America in the 1990s, and, you know, the, <laughs> Beer is drunk, Bud Light is drunk by working class men, really. Yes, exactly. And, you know, beer commercials in earlier decades had frat boys, you know, with backward baseball caps, surrounded by gorgeous babes in bikinis, all having fun, usually frolicking around at the swimming pool during spring bake. Spring break, I should say. Guys like beer and babes, women who like beer usually like handsome men. Yeah. Give them that, and most people will be happy. A hyper, you know, a hyperactive and completely creepy. Uh, activists like Daryl McVeigh Mulvaney dressed up like, you know, I don't know, the, the loser in an Audrey Hepburn lookalike contest is about as far removed as you can get from what uh, American drinkers want. But the problem here is now trying to recapture that lost market because sales are down 24, well, they've lost 24% of market share. Trying to get back that audience, they're now cynically putting out ads with a horse. Right. Yeah, that's right. The Middle American America, market. yeah. Men. Men and cowboys. Cowboys drinking, drinking beer. Cauldron. 
Yeah, they're so, taking but, their audience for fools. Ex exactly right, and, and uh, that's what I can't understand. Apparently, the impetus for this change of direction was that the woman they'd hired uh, in charge of marketing for Anheuser Busch decided, you know, that frat boys and uh, good old boys in middle America are on horses. Uh, that's not the kind of customer they wanted. They wanted females to buy the beer. I mean, what's wrong with selling your product to frat boys and good old boys? What's wrong with that? I mean, why, why do companies feel that they've got to sort of sit in judgment on the quality of the customers that they've got? Oh, if our customers have the wrong political outlook, we don't want them. I mean, this is commercial madness, isn't it? Well, it's a sneering condescension, isn't it? Yes. And I should say, this is this is from the the female advertising executive who's been seen to be somewhat of a fat girl herself, drinking beer through condoms when she when she was <laughs> in uh, in university herself. You know, but it's this it's this whole idea that we know what's better for you. We think that we're we're, we're uh, we don't like your your toxic masculinity. And there's a certain degree of middle management is that even if we take a hit, there's a bigger calling here. We have to show our our. our our social heart but this is of course it's all virtue signaling of the very worst kind there's no substance here they just want to be seen to be doing good they don't really care about any of this it's all about ticking the right boxes in order to get that gold sticker award from the lgbtq societies like stonewall here in the uk they say bravo you're saying the right things and you're doing the right things but what's happened now of course is because the ceo has backtracked and put out these new advertising they've now lost the LGBTQ awards as well. So they're, so they're now hated from, from both directions. I can't think of a more catastrophic uh, ad campaign. This dwarfs the one that Gillette had, if you may remember, a yes, few years ago. Yes, yes. Where Gillette basically tried to associate being male with, with, with toxic masculinity, and it suffered an £8 billion slap in the face for, uh, from the, from the uh, anti-woke brigade. The good thing here, though, is that, you know, Go work, go work doesn't always go right. You know, Ben and Jerry's is still surging ahead in sales. But something has, seems to have changed with, with Bud Light here because it's actually spawning more boycotts. So now in America, there's a huge boycott of Target, which is a very popular retail company, because it's putting out a range of pride clothes, which includes, uh, for boy, young boys, uh, uh, a full bathing suit, which has something where you can tuck away your fishing tackle when you're on the beach. And uh, that's caused a huge uproar in red states, more conservative states, mm. forcing targets to take those displays away. So it seems as if actually things are changing and it's focusing the minds of corporate America and hopefully corporate Britain too. So it's the first step of a long journey, but we can always remain hopeful and optimistic yeah, by this. Because these big companies, you know, they've, they've indulged themselves, if you like, a few of the executives, uh, as you say, by polishing their woke credentials. They, oh, look, you know, we've got a, we've got a, a man to uh, advertise female sports bras. Isn't that great? Oh, no. Oh, now they're boycotting our products. Why are they doing this? <laughs> oh, we've got a trans woman to promote our Bud Light beer. Oh, there's a massive boycott. So, in other words, what's happening now is these corporations, corporate woke organisations, uh, they went woke, uh, they're in danger of going broke, they're losing money, and guess what? They're going back to basics, where they should have stayed. Well, what's really fascinating here, actually, is that there's now a new shoot emerging of a new type of advert, which is an anti-woke advert. So there's a watch company now, which is being talked about in America, called eGuard, and this put out a terrific ad, which shows a young girl becoming a, an, an athlete, and it charts the journey of her life, training all her life to be the very best she can be, and she finally gets to the final, and you're expecting her to win, but then they show a trans female male athlete there, ready to beat her in the race. And then you get the hashtag erased and the watch brand because they know there's a far larger market share out there who align with those views than align with the views of Bud Light and, and Dylan Mulvaney. So that actually could be an exciting new area to target. Interesting. So the backlash may have begun. Uh, Rafe, really good to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. That's uh, Rafe heidel Manku, senior fellow at the New Culture Forum. He's a social commentator as well, so good to talk to him. What do you